when the world was young, a great source of power was created, water. It still serves man and will continue, so long as the rains fall and the rivers run. Sometimes it serves through great hydroelectric generating stations, but, and for a much longer time, is harnessed in less spectacular settings to the powering of water mills. Romans invented the vertical water wheel before the birth of Christ, but the design came to Ireland only about 500 years later. The older mills in Ireland were, as in the rest of Europe, horizontal mills, and in Ireland there was usually one in each clahorn to grind corn for the family needs. The lovely river Blackwater, leaving Loch Raymore and County Cavan, flows through the ancient town of Kells on its way to join the River Boyne at Navan. On the river bank, midway between Kells and Navan, where it has stood for centuries, is Martry Mill. There was a mill at Martry as long ago as 1641, when Nicholas Darcy owned it. It came down through a series of landlords and tenants, one of them was certainly the M. Lee, who left his mark on one of its stones in 1745. In the middle of the last century, a Meath farmer, James Tallon, great-great-grandfather of the present miller, took over the mill. Today, James Tallon, now 24, maintains the mill and its traditions with his uncle Michael. Milling by the traditional stone grinding method, where it still exists, is a rural family business. The mill close by the house of the family, as here at Martry, where the mill overlooks the garden and the fruit trees and the beehives. A rural family life. Mary Talon, the eldest daughter. Bridget Tallon is the mother of the family of three daughters and the miller's son, James. A gentle way of life, backgrounded by the sound of the river and the grinding of the mill. Just how many centuries ago man discovered the power of water is not recorded. Men, or their womenfolk usually, ground grain by hand, first with a rounded stone in the hollow of another. We can still see their primitive querns in museums. Then somebody found that water in a fast-flowing stream or river could be used to turn a wheel, a flat wheel, linked to turn the millstone. Labour-saving devices had been invented. Harvesting wheat has changed from the days of the scythe and the sickle to the combine harvester, 
But the farmer still assesses the product in the traditional way. A gesture which in itself is allied to the milling process to come, whether in the nearby water mill at Martry, or in the big mills of the cities and towns. Jerry Gillick brings this small load of grain to Martry in the traditional way. A contrast to the busy scenes of the past when perhaps dozens of carts lined up to deliver hundreds of tons of grain to the mill. There's a quality check too before the mill takes over the grain. Uncle Michael Tallon is the assessor. Yeah. Wants to be good, you know. Aye. There's no use in putting it up if it's not good. Ah, that's good cotton, Jerry. Yes. Yeah, I like that. That'll make good meal. Well. The start of the grain's journey through the mill must be at the top. No mechanical horsepower for this job. Other tasks must be done before the millstones start to revolve. The sluice gate at the river is closed to feed the mill stream to move the idle water wheel. The water wheel is of cast iron. This one was salvaged from an old mill near Navan 50 years ago to replace the former timber wheel. The paddles, 24 of them, are of wood grown on the farm. Deal from trees planted on the land by Uncle Michael Tallon. The axle on which the wheel turns was once made of wood and it was called, not surprisingly, an axle tree. But now the axle is of iron and geared to the driving of the millstone. The Martry Mill water wheel is what is called the undershot type. The power of the water striking the paddles low down impelling the blades to turn the wheel and main shaft that carries the drive within the building.
The power is on as the water drives the paddles forward and round. The action has begun. The shift of a lever and the stones can begin their work. James Talon starts feeding the grain into the top hopper which leads to the second floor. Gravity will deliver the wheat to the millstones. A wooden cover of stave construction made by a cooper contains the ground flour to prevent it from spilling over and hides the stones from view. Remove it and see how it works. Grain pouring through the hole in the center of the runner stone is ground against the surface of the static bottom or bed stone. The meal, as it is ground, is spun towards the outer edges of the stones where it gathers, lining the outer wooden case before being wafted to the gravity chute where it will fall into the meal bin below. The outer case back on again the chute feeds grain into the shoe with its beechwood pad and strangely named damsel which keeps the shoe in motion. The U-wood bow maintains the tension to ensure that the grain is steadily fed into the center of the stones. Check, check and check again is the miller's tradition to ensure quality of product. On the ground floor of the mill, the main drive shaft, or axle tree, gathering its power from the rushing stream, drives the pit wheel, which in turn carries the power to the strangely named wallower. The power is passed on to the great spur wheel above, supported by the main spindle. Cogs, or spurs of the great spur wheel, are made of local beech wood, but hornbeam can also be used. The pinion, or nut shaft, as some old millers still say, drives the stones. Uncle Michael checks the wooden beach cogs from time to time that they remain true and firm. They should last approximately 20 seasons and are held in place behind by deal wedges. Milling by water power may be slow, but it is sure, and stone ground flour is still the finest that can come to the table. 
Visitors to Ireland rave about our home-baked bread made from stone ground flour. It's old-fashioned, of course it is, but Ireland was very glad of its remaining water mills during World War II, when mills like this, there are fewer of them now, milled homegrown wheat and de-hulled oats, and then reground the product for oatmeal. Hey, chips, are you there? Well, James, how are you? How are you, Jack? Not bad at all. Mate, want a couple of... Do you want to... Do you want to get a bowl of water? Yes, man. Have a beer beside us, man. Not a bad evening, is it? Do you want it? Not bad at all, man. Not bad at all, man. The price is not very good this year. No, but this is fairly bad, all right. It's very wet. It's going to be a lot of feeding waiting. I don't want to pay the price for it. That's right, there's a lot of it won't be fit for a minute. It's going to be hard to get good stuff for making whole flour anyway. It's going to be hard to get good milk of wheat. Oh, yeah. That's a little over the way. That's a cut a little out. Uh, I'll be dear enough, Shreed. Get me the next time, Mark. Might as well have it right this time. Yeah. That's grand now. I'll just put a hold it together and tie it. Tie it tight now. We don't want that spilled in the car to be on the way going home. Right, I will make a good job of it going for it. How much do we owe you for that, James? Uh, sure, it doesn't matter. You can pay me for it next week. Are you sure now? I'm trying positive. All right. I'll put it in the book. All right, Thanks, James. Guys. Thanks very much. Good luck, Jack. See you again. Grinding grain isn't all the water wheel can do for the farmer. Matry Mill can drive quite a bit of farm machinery through its prior takeoff. Dicing turnips, for example, or cutting wood. Driving an external threshing machine. The speedy upright, as it's called, drives two horizontal shafts, which in turn operate elevators and riddles for dressing and cleaning cereals. The smaller weed seeds amongst the wheat grains being dressed here for seed fall through a screen and are discarded, whilst the clean grain collects on the floor. good grain ready for planting in the spring. There are the wheat seeds coming out. When the wheels are turning, the round of work goes on, up those stairs again. fresh arrival of wheat. Up the stream that feeds the water wheel, there's debris. Floating wood brought down the river to be kept clear of the paddles to protect them from damage. Just as dripping water will wear a stone, so the constantly rotating sandstone grinding the hard-shelled grain must wear its partner too. And Michael Talon's skill, one of the many traditional skills in mills, is needed to ensure that the grinding is smooth. A flat stave of wood is coated with lamp black and rubbed over the surface of the bedstone to check for any unevenness. The lamp black marks clearly where dressing must be done, and Michael takes up his pick, an old miller's tool, to chip away the problem places to smoothness once again. This stone, made of Derbyshire sandstone, is used for de-hulling oats. When the mill is working continuously, the stones have to be redressed every year. A job generally done at a slack time during the summer months.
the granite top stone, the runner stone in the language of the miller, must be a grooved one when oats are being crushed. And on the top of each runner stone, there's an iron bracket into which the pinion drive fits to turn it. This is the granite bedstone. The water has served its purpose, yet its uses are not spent. It returns to the black water by the tail race, and so on to the river Boyne and the sea. Maybe not as Wordsworth once said of another river that it glideth of its will, but it has served and remains unpolluted. The equipment for mills such as Martry couldn't be bought as standard items, but were individually cast by foundries like Hammond Lane and often by local foundries. The mill can drive three sets of millstones which perform the various grinding tasks. The set used for milling wheat is made from French burr, a hard stone which is fitted together in sections and bound by a metal band. Fine adjustments are constantly made to raise or lower the runner stone so that the texture of the meal remains even. The Tarrant family have a deep attachment to their mill and the rushing river that runs beside it. To them it's not just their home but part of their heritage. have water wheels and their mills a future, as modern drainage schemes to bring more farmland into production rip into old river beds like that of the Kells Blackwater. There are few enough mills left, but fortunately Martry Mill will remain, not just a tourist site, but a working mill as well. The dragline excavator is at work just below the mill. The river will run faster land will be drained. The banks will have a canal-like look, at least for a time. 
but there will be more drained land for agriculture and hopefully more food for the world. The old weir and the sluice gates will change, but Martree Mill will remain. The fast flowing river will pass it by, but the mill stream will collect its tithe of water when the mill wheel must turn to fulfil its centuries old function. There'll be the fussy patter as it turns and the steady rumbling sound of the machinery within, but overall tranquility and the sense of achievement.